<laughs> All right, mates. Here we are. There was a bunch of shit going on here. Spider girl. Knock on. Wrap on the crate. Piotr? Spider girl? Spider Robinson? Anyone? Okay, fine. Trying to get in the last word, are you? Well, it won't work. Zigzag woman. The word zigzag is central on the crate. The name rings a bell. It's that trick where the woman gets inside a tall cabinet that the magician pushes to center off it off to one side. Why is it that magicians feel the need to mutilate women? They must have had terrible childhoods. Yeah. Dubiously, you knock on the crate. Nobody answers. Okay. Look at. Although this driver. Oscar, uh, Philip Oscar Thigdury is the senior driver at the York Easter Fleet. York Easter Fleet. Huh. He still has acne that makes him look like an adolescent. Nice. Which is why everywhere he goes they call him. Ready? Philo Thigdury. The acne of the... Oh god, stop him before he puns again. <laughs> You try to strike up a friendly conversation with the driver by commenting on how late he's working. Uh, do you see anybody working? He asks. Any of uh, his bro furrows. You're not from ye, are you? After you assure him that you don't even know what ye is, he explains that the Easter has been cracking down on the drivers for every little violation and he never knows when he's being spied on. You ask him about Piotr. All he knows is that uh, the owner is supposedly in on his way to the Transylvanian Alps in Romania or on his way to the Transylvanian Alps in Romania and that he's having his stuff shipped there overnight at tremendous expense. Okay. Hmm. The driver belt is a warning at you to stay away from the boxes. Ah, phone. It's a phone, who would have thought? Use. The window's still closed. Use. The window's still closed. Use. Window. Open. The window seems to give you slightly. Open. The window definitely gives a tiny bit, but it's stuck. As if it's painted shut. Open. Aha! Putting a little elbow into it, the window finally slides uneasily up. <laughs> open a few inches. Well. Move through the window, but the phone's beyond your grasp. Uh. You start to uh, put the tire iron on the telephone, but you suddenly realize that somebody back in Brazil is waiting for this. You'll have to remember to send it back to Mr. Anus. Well. Uh. <laughs> okay, so uh. antenna. Look at the boys. The eighty-seven Ford K series uh, was the only one to come with a factory-equipped coat hanger antenna. This is, uh, has the clever advantage of making it very unlikely that anyone's going to try and steal it. That's oh, fine now. <clears throat> so the tire iron didn't work, but the antenna likely will. Yes. You pull the telephone closer, now you can reach it. Boy's just fucking around. Kitty. Thank you for calling the Suffolk County 911 emergency line. Due to new gun control laws passed by the Liberal Administration, which are making it difficult for law-abiding citizens to defend themselves, all our representatives are currently serving other customers. Please call back during non-peak hours, and we will be happy to assist you with all your emergency needs. This message is sponsored by the NRA and does not necessarily reflect the views of your local telephone company or Legend Entertainment. Right. Customers is well. I suppose in America, a 911 call is a customer. Zero. You know the operator who angrily barks at the, that the service is supposed to be turned off at this number. 
He swears to the heavens that he'll have the service off within two to four hours, or hell come high, come hell high water, or her name isn't Operator 12. She then hangs up on you. Info? Thank you for using ATCI. What city? It's somewhere on Long Island, I think. York Easter Van Line. I'm sorry, I'll need a city. What if I don't know the city? Then you don't know the number either. Damn it. This is Jake. If you don't mind talking to a machine, leave a message. Otherwise, try me again later. Hey, me. This is me. Just enjoying being in two places at once. I should be home soon. I don't think I'll be too much longer. Bye. Mismade girl. What the hell? Not in the crate. Piotr, are you in there? You pause and listen and hear nothing. You shout a little louder. If you're in there, you'll have to talk louder than that. Again, after you wait for a response, there's, there's positively no sound from within the crate. Okay, fine. Be that way. You're probably not even in there. You notice that the driver is staring at you. You glance at him and he looks quickly away, pretending to nonchalantly eat his sandwich. Okay, hmm. Boys. Boys. We try to figure out where the fuck we are. Mm. <laughs> you swing into the cab, there are no keys in ignition. Just as you start the search for them, the driver appears at the door and pulls you out by the ankle. You stumble onto your feet, dust yourself off, and put him in his place with a big harumph. Yeah, you fucking tell him, Botswani, or whatever the fuck we're called. This is where we are, though, isn't it? Got a call in on the driver. Thank you for you. It's somewhere on Long Island. I'm sorry. What if I... Then you don't know. know. Hmm. Aha. You slide around back into the truck. The driver looks very annoyed. Aha. How's my driving? Look at that. Sigur says, how's my driving? Call Klondike something. Nah, mate. It's going back in. I'm gonna peel the bumper sticker. You tug on the bumper sticker and a tiny fraction tears off. The driver obviously peed, rolls the ramp back. Guess he showed you. you bastard. Weird ass music. Aha! Wait, which one is me? This is Jake. If you don't mind- Hey! Oh, fuck's sake. York Easter van line. <clears throat> Don't strain on your next big move. Think of York Easter first. I just got that. God damn. I've never heard of your company before. Well, I don't see how that could be. York Easter is the biggest in town. I'm surprised there's anybody in the office this late. York Easter is always open, sir. How may I help you? Yeah. I'd like to register a complaint about one of your drivers. I see. Well, we'll be happy to contact him immediately if you can give me the license number of the truck. I'm oh, sorry I didn't catch it. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but... And this is a very big but. I can't be sure which of our drivers is at fault without knowing the license number. But should this ever happen again, you can find it mounted on the rear. Thank you. I looked at the bumper sticker. I should have looked at the license plate, too. I feel like an ass. Quite all right. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I thought we did look at the uh, license plate. We're in front, can we? So we climb the trees. Yes. What do you think this is? A rainforest? Keep though. Hmm. Ah, up there. Weird. The Zerk's license plate, hard to see in the dim evening. Yevil 117. It appears to be New York plate. The driver obviously pee. Fuck. York Easter Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
How do your prices compare with other moving companies? Well, we like to say you'll discover deep, deep savings when you look up your Kista. Uh. I'd like to complain about one of your drivers. Did you have the license plate number, sir? Yes, that was YEVL 117. Just a moment, please. To put you on hold for a moment and clicks back on the line. Okay, we have that driver, sir. And what was the problem with his driving? He was weaving all over the road. Oh, dear. Did he appear drunk? No, he was eating. Tush, tush. We'll contact him immediately. Thank you. Lying. What kind of Nigel? The moving man's people goes off, his jaw drops open, his mouth full of sandwich, he says something that sounds like oi tip and walks off into the truck's cab to call his dispatcher. Well, I'm going in the fucking steamer trunk. Even if you undid the straps it's still locked. When you don't see any way to unlock it. Hmm. Knock on. Piotr? Mm. Get in. Tie iron? You start to put the tie iron on the same time, but suddenly like, okay. Uh, take? No. Some friend you are. Uh. Hmm. 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 Bolts, okay, pull. The bolts slide out of a half inch and there's a soft slip with a significant click. Aha. Aha. Get in. With the driver out of the way, you're able to step into the trunk and pull the front closed. And it clicks shut. You spend about a minute trying to figure out how to get out again when you hear the moving man return and angrily finish loading up the truck. Oh yeah, that includes the trunk you're in. You spend the next 24 hours or so being buffed, <laughs> buffeted about, subjected to freezing temperatures, dropped, and generally treated like a piece of meat. As you do, you constantly say to yourself, Take Stonebender to the Florescu. During the many hours of rough travel, of the chilly airplane cargo hold, and of numerous unloadings and reloadings, you develop strange sensations, confidence and power, as if you could easily stow away on any old tram steamer or freight train, Excitement as you realize that you have discovered a new, very inexpensive way to travel that doesn't involve stealing anyone's plane tickets, which didn't exactly sit right. Panic and nausea as you realize that you're halfway around the world with no money at all, not even the number of a nice credit card lady who can make travel reservations, get you replacement credit cards, or send you a pres a prescription refills. But mostly, you feel a surge of anticipation as the truck you're now you're in slows down, tries crunching. The tires crunching on popping and popping on gravel and possible sign of driveway rather than another loading dock. You duck back into the trunk as the driver sets the brake and turns off the engine. Sure enough, although you can't make out the words, the voices outside the truck have familiar inflections of familiarity and relief. None of the voices sound like that of your friend Piotr. The trunk uh, you're in is unloaded. A while later, you stop hearing the sounds of people in the immediate vicinity. You cautiously emerge from the trunk. I was going to knock and inform you that you could come out, Master Stonebender, but I was afraid I might give you heart failure. Is he going to be huge? Uh, uh, are you all right? Yes, but no, I mean, I'm confused. I'm so sorry. Perhaps you didn't know we were expecting you. Master Piotr informed us you were coming. He did? Yes. I believe his exact words were... A man named Jake Stonebender has done something very ill-advised. When he arrives and gets out of my substitution trunk, treat him with utmost respect, but inform him that his trip was unnecessary. I am then to make arrangements to have you sent back to America immediately. First class, of course. He did? Huh. Well, if he knew me well enough to know I was coming for him, he should have known me well enough to know I wouldn't leave without him. What? That's okay, I know what I'm talking about. Of course. <laughs> 
Well, Master Floresc, you anticipated you would refuse to depart for at least a while. Feel free to have a look around and make use of Master Florescu's trap and driver if you wish. Let me know when I can make your return reservation. What a polite man. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I can't mute that. Uh... <laughs> See who this man is. Butler, look at. Piotr Butler stands amidst the crate, checking what's come in and out and what hasn't, keeping an eye on Yudi at the same time. Perhaps we need the toilet and something to eat. Talk to you. Yes, Master Stonebender? Where is Piotr? Where is Piotr? I'm not precisely certain. Piotr? You sure do talk pretty. Is this a little more to the American palate? I don't rightly know. I was just fixin' to get me some vittles when he done left. Now please don't drag me round to the back of the shed and sodomize me as you Americans are so <laughs> fond of doing. Did you get all this from Piotr? Certainly not. But I have seen two examples of American cinema and I know all I wish to know about your customs and your people. Was Deliverance one of the movies you saw? It was. Do -do 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 -do. What was the other one? I spit on your grave. And I must say that you Americans seem completely engrossed with the subject. We're not all like that, you know. Pardon me if I snort derisively. <laughs> and I don't yeah. mean that as a come on. Well, he got rude son all of a sudden. Yes, Master Stonebender? How'd you know I was coming? Master Piotr told me. But how did he know I had left on the spur of the moment? Only one other person knew I was going. Nothing is ever as on the spur of the moment as it seems. Oh, that is deep. Stop ending conversation, you twat. Yes, Master Stonebender? Where exactly am I? Castle Florescu, south of the Transylvanian Alps in Romania. And Piotr lives here? This is his family estate. He has not lived here for many years. It's beautiful. Thank you. I keep bumping into things due to the lack of illumination, but it does give a castle a homey feel otherwise so difficult to achieve. Maybe some track lighting would help. Indirect light, of course. Yeah, bounce it off the walls a little bit. You know, warm it up with some colored lenses. Yes, I like it very much. Very much. Thank you, Master Stonebender. Thank you. There may be a few extra snails for you tonight. We're having snails for dinner? I meant in your bed. What? I wonder if Florescu is anywhere near Lepescu. Maybe we could drop by Svetlana, see how she's doing. Yes, Master Stonebender? What sort of facilities Need do you have bog. here? Racquetball, weight room, Olympic-sized swimming pool. I thought for sure you'd have one of those kidney-shaped swimming pools. Sauna, vending machine room, parking garage, solarium, conservatory, library, Teleconference room, war room, bomb shelter, hedge maze, video parlor, isolation tank, planetarium, zoo, dungeon, and the world's biggest walk-in salad bar. Actually, I meant like bathroom facilities. It was a long trip. Yes, well, we couldn't think of everything. Sorry. Oh, well, damn. Hmm. Hmm? The face of this portrait has been cut out. Ah! You walk around behind a painting and stick your face through it. Ooh, I'm deaf. I'm deaf. Yes, Master Piotr told me about your joke-telling abilities. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is an ornate box pin painted with florid designs in glossy colors. Uh, where? You put the box on your head. <laughs> With the box on your head, you can't see squat. This was a way of improving your FPS in DayZ, I remember. You could put a burlap sack over your head so you couldn't see shit. Your FPS was skyrocket. Wasn't very helpful. Uh, open. You reach around the front and open the flaps. Still can't see anything, but the dim <laughs> in the dim light it appears to be bystanders, even though it's very close. That there's no head on your shoulders, only an empty box. A clever mirror trick, no doubt. Chive sighs and mentioned that this used to be one of the master's favorite tricks. It's hot in here. <laughs> Remove. 
You close the box and pull it off your head. You're dripping with combination of sweat and moisture from your breath. With the back of your arm, you push some matted hair from your eyes. Hey, we have the box. Poster, look at. It's a perfectly preserved framed movie poster of that nauseating musical, Hold That Clot. You don't want to be seen carrying a poster for that movie, Read. According to the poster, Hold That Clot was shot in... Ex... Exmascope? With Lance Boyle and Ingram Tonaley. Uh, and and a supporting cast including Paula Stead, Mel Blank Blankstead, Larry Feinstead, Jay Warstead, and Daryl DeSimilbird. There's probably puns in this that are completely just going past my head due to poor pronunciation and lack of whatever any sort of reference. Please help comments. Castle Floresco is a vast shadowy edifice with stone walls and musty aroma. Mmm, musty aroma. Spirit slates. Look at that. A pair of old fashioned schoolhouse style wooden slates lie here. Yeah. The slate is blank. One might say that particular table uh, is fucking Raza up in here. Right on. Right on, dude. Come on. Ah, oh, bastard. Take. Take the slates. Will that be all? Or are you still browsing? I'm still browsing. Sorry, mate. Hmm. I wonder if I can actually do something with this thing on my head. Okay, I can only use the headless box. I thought I might be able to stick my head through here if I could find out where it was on the... I like Chive, he's alright. Would like the bog though. A tall arched hallway leads deep into the recesses of the castle. Ah, arch. I can never think of... see that word and not think of the game horrible, horrible game called Mistmare, uh, where they, due to really shitty translation, refer to the uh, bows, as in the weapon, as an arch. One, one might almost say that it leads into the bowels of the castle, but remember, we're not that kind of game. <laughs> Fuck. Explore. You wander down the hallway, you could easily get lost here. There are many more rooms and hallways than you can count. Spotting nothing of essential interest, you turn to the main foyer. Carpet, look at. Several lavish oriental rugs are laid on the hardwood floor. The, oh, th these, oh, yeah, this is hardware, wood floor, those are tiles. I was about to complain. Lift. You lift the carpet to check the floor underneath for trap doors, pressure plates, secret hatches, booby traps, spike pits, loose floorboards, telltale hearts, familiar. Good old Poe. Familiar hiding uh, from invading soldiers, families hiding from invading soldiers, and piles of dirt. You find parts of dirt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and a telltale heart, but that's another story. Indeed it is. Grandfather clock. Aha, let's open and walk inside. Get to Ed's laboratory. Grandfather clock doesn't appear to be running. Its hands are frozen at 4.18, which coincidentally is the exact time the clock's first owner died. Which isn't surprising since he, he died by having the clock fall on him. Oh. How do you know that, Jake? Open. There's a stack of old Hardy Boys novels inside the grandfather clock. This could be a mystery if only your chum Chet were here. Probably another reference I don't I don't get. Mirror, look at. This one's an antique ornamental mirror inlaid with golden phalangery and probably extremely valuable. Let's pull the trade this motherfucker and save. Look in. You walk over and look in the mirror. How thoughtful, you think. Somebody's painted Piotr's image reversed on the surface of the mirror so that he'll be able to look at himself, sort of. Is Piotr a vampire? I'm beginning to suspect that. I probably should have guessed that earlier than now, considering where we are. Mm. Flip through and thumb to. Let's look first. I'll always do the look first in case the other ones makes that unavail unavailable. A large box is sitting apart. Among the effulium of Piotr's life. Uh, I'm trying my very best not to cough and it's fucking with my voice a little bit. Thumb through. As you thumb through the book, it keeps falling open on page 13. Uh, the Headless Woman. In The Headless Woman, the magician effects a most startling illusion suitable for a stage or parlor. The box is fashioned with two mirrors. Ah, hinged at the back, uh, meeting in the center. I fucking knew it. 
Sea plans were uh, sea workshop plans in companion molly on this set. In performance, the assistant's head is clearly seen through the front of the box, figure 8, and her hands supported in the box where it rests on her shoulder. Magi closes the box. The moment this is done, the assistant draws the mirrors closed with her face, figure B, and a small movement a small movement easily con uh, covered. If desired, daggers may be thrust through the holes in the box, thus further disguising the seam that runs vertically where the mirror set meets. Magi then opens the cabinet, revealing the vanished head, figure C, and the process is reversed if the Magi wishes to reconjure the head, missing head. Nice. Flip through. The Vanishing Horse and Rider. For the suddenly, uh, suitably well equipped stages, the Vanishing Horse and Rider is difficult to top for mystery and spectacle. The Magi atop a white steed vanishes from a box suspended well above the stage and it instantaneously appears in another such box on the opposite of the stage. Duplicate horse and rider are used, made up or masked to resemble closely the magi. A black backdrop must be used on stage. Uh, black blinds are necessary for the two boxes. As an illusion commences, the duplicates are already in place behind the black blind, blind of the rightmost box. This creates the illusion that the audience is viewing all the way through the box to the backdrop. The box is pulled into the air, Major and his horse ride into the leftmost box, which is then raised up figure A. On the Magi's major queue, a black blind per- no, the, <coughs> the black blind is pulled down in front of him. This is sometimes best disguised with a flash pot or a similar device. I've been talking about Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder so much that this automatically became a black, blind black person for me. I may be retarded. A second later, the blind in front of the duplicates is allowed to snap open figure B and the box should be lowered quickly and the horse and rider led off stage so that the audience will not have an opportunity to link on them. Nice. I feel like this is doing a bit of a Sin City. Uh, well, actually not quite, but I feel like opening with the uh, rainforest bit was probably a bit of a mistake since this one is much more interesting and a lot of people might have stopped playing at the rainforest one. I feel like this one resonates better with me, but that might just be my personal taste. I like the rainforest one, but at that point I was still trying to figure out the game and now I sort of realize what it is and what it's about. It's a lot easier to digest the rest of it. The other one was, I feel, too close to reality to... It sort of pu puts you off balance a little bit. Candelabra. Look at. Candles of this candelabra gives a burnished sepia glow to the room, like an old photograph or a thermal fax that's been sitting in the sun. Extinguish. You blow out the candles, they flicker dim and flare back up. They must be one of them self-re-enlighting candelabras. Very fine. This box looks like... Something we can fuck around with. A smallish box that rather resembles a treasure chest. Yes! You take the box. As you lift it, you can feel the side shifting. The joints are loose. You decide the box is too fragile to take with you. Open. Oh, bling bling, sucker! You gently lift the lid. A few silver coins fall out. You scoop them up and put them back in the pile inside of the box. Palming coins. Ah. Sneaky. Excuse me. Sir, what are these? Palming coins, sir. The master uses sleight of hand to make these appear out of thin air. Really? How's he do it? Thinner than normal? Sleight of hand. Oh, right. Yeah. If I'd have to guess, a palming coin is like a regular coin, except it's much, much thinner, so when viewed from the side, it's almost invisible. You may Google that and tell me I'm wrong, which I'll probably do after the set anyway, if I remember. Let's take a few. Take a handful of the palming coins. Are you a magician, sir? No. Oh, I couldn't help but admire the way you make things disappear. It's true, we have stolen quite a few things. I'm sorry, uh, butler man. I think he's called Chives. My walkthrough tells me. I have a little thing I, I, I skim every now and then, so I have a general idea of what I'm doing. I try to look at everything, though, because a lot of this text is funny, and I feel like that's where a lot of the game is. The foyer is littered with parking crates, some of which you recognize from outside Piotr's house on Long Island. Open. Still sealed tightly. No way of opening, so I guess I can't hide in them. It's interesting how much you seem to like hiding in big boxes. Is there something you'd really like to say? Or that you feel you can't? Or you have been trying to get away from something that frightens you? Why do you hate your mother? People reveal so much about themselves when they play adventure. Oi! 
You know that we've been keeping track of all the choices you made and not made and <laughs> determining what those choices say about you. It's true, check out the file Skubblescribe text now located in the directory of your hard drive and you can read the auto personality evaluation that is updated. Is there such a thing? Well, we're at half an hour. I'm gonna go see if there is such a fucking thing. And if there is, I'm gonna post it in the comments. Uh, in the uh, video description. Actually, I'm gonna do it in the comments. No one fucking sees. I just loaded, didn't I? I'm a fucking idiot. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and get back to where I need to be. Hi, boys. So, time for watching. Tien.